Hey friends, today I'm going to bring you something a little bit different and something you may not even know exists. A map similar to this is called an Atlas and Gazetteer. Gazetteer? Let's go with Gazetteer because I'm really not sure how to pronounce this, but I can tell you that I'm sitting here today and alive probably because of having one of these with me once upon a time. So I'm going to show you exactly what is in these, how you use them, and talk about why you may really need one when you're out on your adventures. So let's get to it. Okay, the easiest way to think about what this gazetter gazetteer happens to be is think of it as a whole book of state maps kind of except it's going to basically detail every road path it's going to break whichever state you're using down into little grids and it's going to show you all kinds of things you aren't going to find on road maps and street maps there's elevation info this is an older one this is a 2001 version the newer ones have GPS coordinates mixed in with these grids so if you spot something you want to see you can get right to where you want to go and even though we live in this connected world you have to remember that we're not always connected especially when we are out adventuring I cannot begin to tell you the number of times I've had no cell service no computer service and I have been back to having to rely on the pre-technology way of doing things to solve a problem. With that said, let me give you an idea of what is in here. Okay, now this particular book is for West Virginia. Look at all the different things that have almost similar names down through here. And of course, this will take you to the right page, the right grid map. By the way, this is not pronounced hurricane, it's pronounced hurricane. So if you're in that area, say it right so they won't think you're a tourist. But once you get past the index, you're going to find lists of national lands, of state lands, drives, bicycle routes, other interesting things in the states, attractions, all of the historic sites, and exactly where they are. Things you would not even have thought about, like covered bridges that you may want to explore and find. And an unbelievable amount of fishing information. Now, this particular one is old. It is from 2001. Again, newer ones are going to have GPS information. They're going to have ATV trails. But you still have hiking, campgrounds, hunting, and then you're going to have basically what is your state map for whichever book you are using. In the great state of West Virginia, down in this portion, you have a place called Princeton, which is the county seat for Mercer County. You come on down to Bluefield at the state line. So you can see you need to be up here with these green numbers, so you're looking at grid 59 if you're in this area. You're looking at 5963 if you get down here into this area. That tells you what page to turn to in order to get a blown up view. If you come up here towards the top of the state, let's say on this road, this old Route 50 between Parkersburg and Clarksburg, you can see you're going to run through several grids. So you're really going to jump down here at a grid 33 and 34. And if you're following this road, then it's going to put you up here in the grid 23, 24, 25. This little area, which may be a 30 or 40 mile stretch, is going to go through five of these grids. So you're going to get into quite a bit of detail. So coming across from Parkersburg toward Clarksburg to the east on one of the larger maps, you can see we're going to get into this area 
around Ellenboro. And we're going to be divided between a couple of maps. We're going to be divided between 23, and it's going to tell you, you know, the rest of the information is over here on grid 34. So now we're over here on grid 34. And we'll get back up into this area. Again, you have Route 50, which is probably about the only thing that's going to show up on your highway map or state map. And maybe this one main drag down through here. But you have these other roads jutting off. Some of them are named County Road 13, County Road 25. Some of them have different names. Some of them have no names because you are into a rural, rural area. And I can tell you to this day in that area I just showed you, you aren't going to have cell service and anything to help you in most of those areas. Another thing is there is a large portion of West Virginia to the east where there is a government satellite station. And because of that and because of the rules there, it is like stepping back in time for probably 50 or 60 miles around that area. area. There is no cell service. You will go there to this day and you will find pay phones. You are not going to have anything wireless work in this area. If you have a subscription to OnStar, you can kiss it goodbye if this is part of your route because it is simply going to stop working because you're dealing now with government security. Again, these are the kind of areas where if you're lost, you're off the beaten path, you're going to be on your own and a standard map is going to show the main kind of road through there. So if you end up somewhere else, you're hiking, you're fishing, you're biking, you're camping, it's possible you're going to get lost and there's going to be no one to help you. Or you can end up in a situation like one that I'll tell you about. Oftentimes when I'm on trips, I take a bicycle with me. I like to ride and I like to get out into obscure places with it. And that road from Parkersburg to Clarksburg, West Virginia, now has one of these rail trails where the railroad used to be and is not used anymore and you can travel through there for about 40 miles. The railroad's been, tracks have been taken up and you just ride this area where the trains used to go. And there are a bunch of tunnels on this route. I can't remember the, the exact number. It's been a few years since I was up there. Something like 23 different railroad tunnels you're going to go through if you take this entire trip. And part of the way along this path, you actually run into a little state park, which is where a lot of people will stay at when they're in that area. You can actually hit the rail trail right at the edge of that park, and, and you can go a few miles and go down through a tunnel, and that's what most people do. Sometimes I ride a little more extensively than that. I have ended up, you know, 20 miles away from where I started easily before. And at that point, you're dealing with weather issues, you're dealing with darkness issues, different things that, that can happen. And I have had several bad situations. I have had three or four situations that in various forms probably put my life in pretty bad danger. But that's part of the adventure. Everybody likes the adventure part until something goes wrong. And at that point, the adventure part turns into problem solving and survival. So it just depends on how much of a risk in adventuring you're comfortable with. And while I do a lot of things right, sometimes I will do something really stupid, as I have done three or four times on bicycles. On this particular route, I went quite a ways and I had never been in this particular area before. I know nothing about this area. I have no friends in this area. I know no one in this part of West Virginia. There is no cell service. There is nothing really to help. But I decide I'm going to cruise down through this thing. And I do. And it's great. And from a place I left, it is pretty much 
a nice little downhill, not much, but just barely a downhill grade. So I know coming back is going to be quite a bit of exertion because it's going to be complete pedaling because it's now going to be a complete uphill grade. So I am however many miles into this thing and I pass a guy coming back because looking at the basic map thing it's like it looked like there would be a town there and I pass a guy coming back and he looks at me and he's like there's nothing there so he is headed back toward the state park seven or eight miles whatever this shouldn't be a big deal because I have an hour and a half or so until it gets dark I have a couple of snacks a little bit of water it's fall of the year, I'm not really worried about dehydration or anything. But what I didn't count on on this trip is things that can go wrong. You can get sick. You can be injured. You can have your bike tear up to the point that you can't repair it with what you have with you. And now you are semi-stranded and or pushing or carrying a bicycle for a hell of a long way which was kind of the situation that I found myself in. I went on down, hit the bottom of this thing, realized I have the seven or eight miles, whatever, back. There is no town. There is one road that crosses over that is not marked. I see it veer off and split. I don't know where it is. I don't know what direction I'm supposed to go in. I don't even know where these roads go. I don't know if they go anywhere near back to where I'm actually trying to get to. Because again, you're in a rural area and roads don't go straight. They go down here and around this mountain and circle back around. And, and it becomes apparent to me really quick that I am in trouble. I am not going to make it back to this place that I'm trying to get to anywhere by dark. Because having to push or lug this bicycle up a hill in the shape I'm in, which isn't the best, I'm now going to be doing about two miles an hour, which means if I don't stop, it's going to take me four hours. And I'm going to be going through tunnels. And while I have a light on the bicycle, a headlight, I'm not sure it will actually make the entire trip. So I start back up through there and I make it about half a mile and at that point it's obvious that I am just, I have had it. I'm screwed. I have no, I'm on a bicycle. I have no camping stuff with me. I'm now out of food, basically out of water. I don't know where I am. But a newer version of this fine book I had ripped some pages out of and thrown in my little backpack. So I was able to look at the road and follow the roads that weren't marked with road signs as this rail trail went across it and kept going in the middle of nowhere and figure out where these roads went and that I was right that several of them was taking me nowhere back to where I needed to be to find the one that would and go down through there and finally run into somebody that could provide me with some help and help me get back to where I needed to go. Had I not had these pages from this thing thrown into that backpack, there is a very good chance I would have taken off on the wrong one of the wrong roads in the wrong direction. In which case, there could have been no houses for miles and then I would have been dealing with darkness issues and let me tell you there was not traffic on these roads there was like virtually none this was a desolate pretty deserted area it's not like a car was going to come by that you could flag down you know an hour before it gets dark and say hey so there's lots of ways whether you're hiking whether you're just exploring out in the desert if you're out west and have one of these on Utah or Arizona or whichever state you happen to be in. If you're in the east, there's just different ways that these things can come in handy. So depending on your level of adventure and what activities you may be doing when you're out and about, 
it may be beneficial to pick one of these up for an area that you're in plan ahead and have them before you go to wherever you're going to do this stuff probably don't want to be taking a whole again 11 by 15 or whatever these these are so grab a plastic baggie rip out the couple of pages you need grid pages for where you are slam them in there and you will at least be able to tell where the highest peaks are on each one of those grids have some idea of your mountain -ish hill sides and ranges and most importantly if you run across roads you will be able to have some idea of where those roads actually go to and if they're going to lead you back to where you need to be or further away and put you in more danger. Now, this is a product, this gazetteer map, that's not going to be for everybody, but for the right person, it is. I'd never heard of these before five or six years ago. I picked one or two up here and there along the way. Like I said, this one kind of saved my butt. So they are they are handy to have for the information they provide, both with trip planning and in case something goes wrong and you don't have that tech help that we've all become so accustomed to. When Google Maps and hitting the internet and cell phone service and these things just isn't going to help you. So I'll link down to this one in the description, and from there you can follow it over to Amazon, see what the current prices on these things are. You'll be able to jump over and get one for whatever state you're interested in. As for videos, we'll get back to some van stuff in the next videos. We'll talk soon.